Chapter 15. The Ghost Detective. Climbing up a coal chute was not something Stella had ever imagined herself doing. However, right now, the new Lady Saxby was doing just that, following the chimney sweep up out of the cellar. Soot lit the way with his ghostly glow pointing out where all the bricks that jutted out were that she could use to hold on to. The ghost knew every nook and cranny of Saxby Hall's endless network of tunnels. The chute was used to deliver bags of coal down to the cellar, where it was stored before it was all used up in the fireplaces in Saxby Hall. At the top of the long chute was a small hatch in the wall leading out into the kitchen. Climbing up the chute was hard work, especially for young Stella, who was tired and hungry. Just as she was making good progress, her finger slipped on a piece of damp brickwork. Ah! cried the girl as she fell down the chute, sending debris falling. She bounced off the sides, finally managing to stop herself by clinging on to, with one hand to a tiny piece of brick that was jutting out. Don't look down, my lady, shouted Soot from above. Sarah couldn't help herself. Immediately she looked down and saw how far up she was. If she lost grip, she would drop like a stone and no doubt break both her legs. I, I, I can't do this any more, she shouted up in frustration. Yeah, you can, me lady. Don't look down. I, I am not looking down, she protested. Reach for the next piece of brick. It's just up to your left. I'm going to fall. You're not going to fall, reassured the ghost. Feel for that piece of brick with your hand. Have you found it? The girl reached out, her free hand above her. Yes, I, I think so. Now, nah, pull yourself up. I haven't got the strength. You have, my lady. I know it. You don't want to be left to rot in that coal cellar, do you? No, mumbled the girl. It was a little like she was being told off. Sella took a deep breath and pulled herself up. There, you can do it, exclaimed Soot. Step by step, he guided her up the chute. Looking up past Soot, Stella could see the patch of light above becoming larger and larger. Eventually, she had hoisted herself up to the top of the chute and clambered out of the hole. Shaken and exhausted, the girl landed in an undignified heap on the cold kitchen floor. Some of Stella's happiest memories were from this room. Having grown up with an army of servants, her mother had simply never been taught to cook. However, once the staff had to be let go after Alberta had squandered all her family's money, Mama was forced to try. Her cooking was atrocious. It became the stuff, stuff of legend. Yet all those cakes that never rose, or jellies that never set, or pancakes that were tossed into the air and got stuck on the ceiling, were made with that most important of ingredients, love. The young Stella would help her mother in the kitchen. Together they would make scones for Papa, his absolute favourite. Even though they would come out of the oven looking like gargoyles, once the scones had been heaped high with huge dollops of clotted cream and raspberry jam, they were absolutely yummy. When her parents were alive, the kitchen had always been such a happy place. Sadly now, like so much of the house, it had become deserted. Sitting on the floor together, Stella told her new friend all about the events that had led up to her being locked in the coal cellar, how she had been in a terrible car crash that cost her parents their lives, a crash she had no memory of whatsoever, how she had been in a coma for months, how her aunt Alberta was trying to keep her captive in the house, how the evil woman was desperate to find the deeds to Saxby Hall so Stella would have to sign everything over to her, how if she did that she feared for her life, who knows what wickedness her auntie had in store for her. How she had tried to flee to the nearest village, but the giant owl had captured her and brought her back. How there must be more to the tragic accident that killed her parents. How all this pointed the finger of suspicion at Aunt Alberta. So it listened to everything the girl said with interest. And when she had finished, he thought for a moment. Yeah, it's all very fishy, my lady, he said. But if you want the old moo locked up, you need proof. Yes, I suppose I do, agreed the girl. Let's become detectives, just like in my favourite books. A bolt of energy passed through Stella's body as she th th the thought, and she leapt excitedly to her feet. 
real life detectives. Sue was becoming excited now too. And if we work together, we can look for clues. Now, where do you think we should start? The ghost thought for a moment. The garage. Find out what happened to the car. Let's go, Detective Soot. Right you are, Detective Milady.